these are the colors that I will be using. Burnt Umber, Yellow Lemon, Titanium White, Ultra Blue, Burnt Umber, Lemon Blue, Ultra Blue, Raw Sienna, Titanium White, Hi, how's it going? Today I'm finishing up on some finishing touches on the Jesus painting that I have been telling you all about. In today's painting tutorial, I'm going to be doing some work on the folds on the white part on Jesus' robe. I have enjoyed this painting very much. I worked on it for some time. A little over a year I had stopped for several months. My mom had passed away recently and I had stopped painting on this picture. The folds in these robes were quite challenging for me. Jerusalem is over here on the left and you can't see it very well, of course, but today's main focus was working on these folds and bringing them closer together. This is a painting that I've really enjoyed working on. There are some lines here in the middle. Let's see if that helps somewhat. Now here, I'm going to, right there at the elbow area, work on getting that closer together. Painting is something that I really enjoy, especially oil painting. It is so forgiving. I am one, I will be honest, to make mistakes. And with oil paint, it doesn't dry quickly, so therefore when I make mistakes, as I often do, I can just go back and sort of smudge it out or scrape it off. I like acrylics and watercolor 
and other mediums as well. But they dry so quickly. I have nothing against them. But oil has been my favorite medium all these years. And the cameraman has let me know that there are some lines parallel through here while I'm painting. So I hope you can all get an over size view and clear picture in comparison of where I'm going with this painting. It is nearly finished. While painting, I was thinking about something I had heard about 20 years ago about if you want to keep your paints dry, you can put them in the freezer. And here recently, I heard an artist, I won't say any names, mention wrap them in clean wrap and put them in the freezer. I would highly rec recommend you do not do this because those toxins can escape and evaporate throughout your refrigerator and even in the refrigerator you simply do not want to even use harsh soaps or cleansers because they can evaporate into eggshells, into your cheese, and into your other food products, produce, and such. So, any of those out there who are putting your oil paints, in the freezer to preserve them. I highly rec recommend you stop doing that immediately. I personally do not think that that is good advice. And again, I do apologize for these lines through here. I do not know why this is happening. I still do not know all of the technical effects. I'm just simply working with what I have. And while I've been painting this picture, I can't help but wonder what Jesus must have been thinking, looking on Jerusalem. If I am not mistaken, this picture could be from Matthew 24, where he is talking about that there will be no stone unturned. And this is at the end of this painting. Perhaps uh, eventually I can start one. Uh, from start to finish and as you can see now I am really focusing on 
the folds and the white part of the row and I am mixing a little burnt umber and raw sienna glazed with a little titanium white and these folds are not complete yet and they are not as tight of folds as I would like them to be yet And I still have some work to do on Jerusalem. I have not got there yet. Now I'm going to bring a highlight down through there. I did not use black. I mixed the, I was out of the color blue that I wanted, so I had to use the, I did not have the ultra marine blue but I did have burnt umber so I did use the Ultra blue and burnt umber, and it helped me achieve the color black that I wanted. And again, I do not know. My cameraman keeps informing me that there are some blue lines running down the camera and why this is, I do not know, but I hope all of you can get the general picture here and see what I am trying to achieve here. And as I'm painting this, I'm wondering what Jesus must have thought looking down on Jerusalem. And the size of this picture is a Oh, and I also use crimson here with the ultra blue to achieve the purple that I will be working on here shortly. 
This picture is a 12 by 24, of course. And when painting Jerusalem, the perspective and all of that, as you can see here, I'll get back to perspective. I use Q-tips when I want to, when I get a little bit too much of a darker color, I simply take a Q-tip and gently wipe off that excess because right there I'm going to be coming in with some more of that raw sienna and the white part as I said before is not finished and this is a close up view but from a distance it is strikingly beautiful and I'm not just saying that because it is one of my paintings. I have to admit, some of my artwork over the years, I have not been particularly proud of. I need to bring this down at an angle or so so it will be lining up with his left arm there at the bend of the elbow. And I would like to add more detail work later on to his hair and the beard perhaps too. And you can't really tell at this moment but from a distance, which I will be sharing later, I financially am not able to purchase expensive paintbrushes now. However, when I was in college, I had the sable brushes and some more expensive paint brushes. And believe it or not, this painting so far has been achieved by cheap paint brushes. As long as they have some stiffness and they're not really loose, you can achieve what you're looking for and it takes practice when painting most of all it requires patience patience took me years to achieve although i put my paint brushes down for years and pick them back up, mm, let's say, about how many years ago would you say I started painting again? Yes. Uh, about... seven years now 
I had put them down for many years. I was taking care of my mom. She was really sick. And I started in high school during my study hall. It didn't count as a credit then. So from 93 till about into my later 30s, I was painting still. Not as much as I am now. And there are some days I do not paint, but I do try so every week. And I tell everyone that says, Oh, I can't, I can't paint. I will never have that talent. But I tell everyone, it takes patience. It takes time. It's not achieved overnight. It takes years. And a lot of it is simply learning by your own mistakes and practice does make perfect lots of practice but mainly patience these folds are not where I want them to be yet. I am painting wet on wet with oil. And it can be done. It just takes a lot of experience. And as you can tell with the Q-tips, that is why I use them so if I want to come in with light, lighter or darker colors, I can take the Q-tip and just simply smudge it off. I do try to keep the oil paint off my hands, of course. Oil paint is not near as toxic as it was over 20 years ago. But still, if I get oil paint on my hand, I will try to wash it off with soap and water as soon as possible. And baby wipes, I discovered over 20 years ago in college that not only will they get oil paint off your skin really quickly, if you have some excess paint on your brush, you can take that baby wipe and use it to wipe the paint off the brush. Now here I am using a larger brush right in here and every artist has their own style and what and how they paint and what they would like to achieve. I want to make these 
ruffles here on the very edge start taking shape and then eventually move all the way up because I need to come more up at an angle here I'm thinking I think I will wait right here maybe a little more right in here yeah that is what I was wanting to achieve there down in here I need to lighten this up somewhat and bring in some yellow ochre to where the Sun is sort of reflecting off of his ruffles Now, I do not use paint thinners. I used to. And even the low odor thinners, I have quit using as well. I find that what I do works. I do not use turpentine. I manage the way that I do it. I've been painting for well over 20 years and I guess you might say I'm just set in my ways. I'm not up with the modern technology, the new things that they use now. I still do it the way my professor taught me back in college. Back then, they didn't have the things that they have now which can make painting much easier. I'm working on his highlights still. I want to bring in some more darkness. And some more curls and waves in some places and in case you haven't all noticed I am a lefty so I do apologize for that a lot of artists that do the YouTube videos are right handed and perhaps it does help in seeing areas that are being painted much better I do not regret being left-handed except for in school back then 
it seemed all the desks were made for right-handed people. <laughs> So, I just make do with the best that I can and thankful for what I do have. I'm trying to get some more darkness in there with his highlights. And I am not pushing down on the canvas much. And that is a good rule of thumb for beginners. Try to just gently lay your arm next to the canvas without pushing in because it will stretch your canvas further and it will make it sort of droopy and loose. And this is a stretched canvas. I have painted on boards before and I find that they bow over time, I have several boards that I have painted on. Nevertheless, I mean, they're still salvageable. They just need to be cut at the top along the edge and stretched on carefully to a frame without cracking or chipping the paint. Now I personally stay away from the lead white because it will crack over time. The titanium white you can add a versatile of colors to it and achieve that color that you want. I recommend staying away from the lead paint because of the lead in it. Even when cleaning my brushes I will get a sandwich bag or food grade gloves and use an old bar of soap that I do not plan on using in the bathtub, of course. <laughs> and I will just use lukewarm water and take my brush and gently wipe it across the bar of soap and use the sandwich bag and put the brush in the hand that I have the bag in and sort of scrub the paint to the very tip and run it under that water kind of crisscrossing it across the bag and keep repeating that process until the paintbrush appears to be clean. Now these folds are quite tricky starting out on this one. I thought that the white part would 
be the easiest and the purple rope would be the hardest. And this white part of the robe, the folds, are still not where I would like them to be yet. But I just wanted to show everyone how extensive these folds can be. probably won't be, won't be my working much longer on these folds, but it's just sort of to give everyone a good general idea. My camera producer tells me that at times the lines are appearing and then at times they are not. So again, I do apologize for that. This is my first painting tutorial. I have many more to come. And of course, I'm probably going to have to let some of this dry. So then in turn, it will blend more there that is more of the effect that I want to achieve And that is wet, of course, the paint, but it is not thick in the sense that it will take days to dry. Perhaps I should maybe just add a thin line in there to let me know that it is about where I would like for that one white fold to be. I hope you all are enjoying this video. I love to paint. The sunshine is trying to come through the window just a little bit there on the right hand side. 
I think it's quite pretty actually. Who knows? <laughs> I could add in an extra light source there. And if you enjoy this video, I hope you will hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you will ring that bell so you will be sent those notifications. And don't miss a thing. I get a little obsessed with detail. Wow, there's a beautiful ray of sunshine coming through there. Quite beautiful. Wow. Who knows? I might add that in there. So...